Oh man, am I glad you stopped by on the long weekend. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is the weekend of February 17th. Now, what I like to do on this show is just share my own personal due diligence with you on hot penny stocks. We're talking about stocks under five bucks that you can find on the major exchange or the OTC. And of course, I'm looking for stocks that have the potential to make us money. Now, this weekend, we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to pick up where I left off on my live streaming event on Thursday. I do a live streaming event every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And they last about 60, 90 minutes. And normally, I have a co-host, Taylor. I do the due diligence. She does the charting. Well, this last Thursday, she was on vacation. And I couldn't get a stand-in from my Discord group, Penny Boys, because coincidentally, we had a quarterly meeting at the same time I was doing the video. So I had to do it all by myself. <laughs> I'm not crying, honestly. But I learned something. I was bouncing from the web browser over to my trading platform with no problem, just as you normally would. Well, I don't do that when I'm making videos through the week. I use my own programs. I don't use StreamYard. And every time I leave the browser to go to my trading platform, I have to shut down, change channels, and then turn it back on and get back into it. Well, that breaks my continuity, my fluidity, my flow of research. So I really don't like doing that. So we're going to try something different here. And as I said, we're going to pick up where I left off on Thursday. I did about seven or eight stocks and we had a few more and I'm not going to get to all of them, but I am going to get to a few more right now. One of them we didn't cover way early in the show was QEDN. Personally, I would like to take a look at that one. <laughs> and then we have to cover Mr. Jerome Horace. Jerome brought us a ticker and we cut off right at his ticker, which is a horrible thing. It seems we've been having that happen more often than not lately. So yes, Jerome, I've got your ticker PTPI all lined up. Mr. Roy Fuchs, he brought us LEU, but it ain't no penny stock. And he told me it wasn't. He wasn't lying. It's over $40. That is more than just a little bit outside of our neighborhood. So we're not going to take a look at that one. We also had Emir bring us JYD. I just covered that a few days ago. So we're not going to take a look at that. And then we had three tickers come in from Keith Lanter, SNES. We've talked about that one a lot. That is the new soft bait rat poison, which makes male and female rats not able to have babies. You make them infertile, you don't have to kill them, they just quit multiplying. Then we have APCX, I believe that was Aptex. We've talked about them, I do believe that's Aptex, I got a video on them. And then he also brought up Baby F, B-A-B-Y-F. This is the non-dairy milk formula for babies, which has been very hot, it's in all the big stores, but the stock has been falling, as a lot of good companies have. And because we have talked about these companies off and on before, I'm going to skip those two. But we had one come in at the end of the show, which had no chance of being looked at. We're going to look at it right now. This came from Jay Pong. This is ticker T-A-N-H. So let's dive on into this. Close your eyes. This will happen for just a second. Boink. Ah, I know, I know. Sorry. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that. So we are looking at QED Connect, ticker QEDN. This is an American company based out of New York, though they do most of their work in South America, Colombia specifically. They finished the day on Friday at 0009, nice buy price. Get in at 001. As soon as it hits 002, you've doubled your money. That's quick, easy profits right there. She had no gains or losses on Friday. I don't know if the chart moved and just came back to where she started from or not. We're going to figure that out together. She is on the OTC. She's on the bottom tier where you get no validated information. She is current, but we do get some validated information because of these two green ticks I tell you to look for. The transfer agent verified and the verified profile. 
This is put here by an unbiased third party that validates this information. And that's the only validated information you're going to get with a pink. So this is looking pretty good. So what is QED about? QED sells a superfood, Sacha Inchi Seeds. Sacha Inchi is growing down in South America, Colombia. That's where they're doing their business. And the plant grows in seven months and then produces these seeds every 15 days. It's a pretty big seed. You might want to call it a bean. And it's very nutritional. It is a superfood. It is packed with omega-3, 6, and 9, and is a complete vegan protein with all nine amino acids. And they're making very strong use of this down there. And they're doing things that nobody else has been able to do. Now, the company just started making revenues at the end of 2022. Most of the news we're going to look at came from 2023, but we do have one piece of news from January of this year. So let's dive into that news now so you can get an idea of what's going on for the company. Now, we're going to look at the order news first, and you're going to see that they are doing a lot. We're not going to go through all the news because there really is a lot of news. They are acquiring thousands and thousands of acres with hundreds and hundreds of farmers all growing this Sacha Inchi seed. And they're getting a lot of attention from big companies. I mean, big companies like Nestle and Ingredient. So they tell us here that on March 27th, Nestle informs GMS team that the management team of Nestle has designated a marketing team to evaluate all of GM Sachi Inchi's products to design a possible strategy for innovation between the two companies. GM Sachi Inchi is the only beverage in the world with omega-3, 6, and 9 and a complete vegan protein. No other company in the world has been able to develop a beverage made with Sacha Inchi. That's not only first mover advantage, that's a monopoly. The company Sacha Inchi and Nestle have had several meetings during the last three years, which I believe started in 2020. The most important meetings have been, and we got a list of things they've been doing here, and because we don't have all the time in the world, I'm going to dive in on just a couple that struck me. Uh, the company was able to get their GM Sacha Inchi beverage into the Tetra Pak, the milk cartons, at the end of 2021 and obtain all full approval to start selling at the end of 2022, which is when their revenue started was just at the end of 2022. On February 2023, Nestle announced that by 2026, it will have invested $100 million into Colombia. Now, picking up where we left off here with Nestle, this news came out April 24th. Sacha Inchi and Nestle have a possible 12.5 million USD co-branding deal and there's an update on the ingredient final product. On April 16th, 2023, GM Sacha Inchi received an email from Nestle approving all the products GM Sacha Inchi sent to Nestle for approval. And Nestle has requested a complete list of all the products that GM Sacha Inchi sells. On April 10th of last year, the company met with Nestle to discuss the possibility of a co-branding between both companies. The company, Nestle, is paying for equipment and a plant. They are paying for innovation and development. They are providing working capital. They are doing a lot. Now, they tell us here that GM Sacha Inchi Beverage is the top priority because the global plant-based milk market at the end of 2021 was $35 billion. By 2030, they anticipate it to be nearly four times that much, almost $125 billion in just a few short years here, folks. And they say that Nestle wants to penetrate at least 5% of that market, which is just under $2 billion. Now, they said they wanted a list of the products. This is a list of the products that they are going to be getting from uh, GM Sacha Inchi. And this is a good piece of information here. GM Sacha Inchi believes that GM Sacha Inchi beverage 
could be a leader in the plant-based beverage market because it is the only beverage that has 29 grams of protein, all nine essential amino acids, and omega-3, 6, and 9. 29 grams of protein. That is potent, folks. Now, they tell us here they had another deal with Ingredient. We've got a piece of news about that deal. Sacha Inchi received an order for 12 million Tetra Packs of their milk and 150 tons from Ingredient. And they start working with the United Nations. <laughs> they just keep doing more and more. The Ministry of Agriculture of Colombia has set a goal to plant 5,000 hectares of Sacha Inchi in areas that have illegal crops like coca leaf and areas that have high priority call PDET development programs. And there's a lot of information here talking about that. They tell us that GM Sacha Inchi will prove that in Colombia, we can change illegal crops like coca leaves into Sacha Inchi and manufacture GM Sacha Inchi beverage for low-income children and breastfeeding mothers. Now, this news here, it is just packed with information. So I had to really pick and choose what I was going to share with you here. So don't think what I haven't read isn't important. There's a lot going on here. Now, they tell us about the deal with ingredients. Ingredient put an order to manufacture 12 million cartons of their 200 milliliter Tetra Packs plus 150 tons of GM Sacha Inchi powder to replace their 150 tons of flaxseed oil, which they use to provide their omega-3 to their Bienstarina, whatever that is. Now, this is what stands out to me as being important. The market looks like it's opening up. You're going to read a lot of information how the UN needs them and this country needs them and the products are just, just going off the shelves. So they have to produce more. You can't keep up with your market if you can't produce it. And they are definitely expanding production. They are expanding their GMS facility in Medellin. They're going to expand that to 20 tons per month. They are opening up two facilities near their original facility, one in Cartago and one in Atlantico. Both of these are to produce 20 tons a month. The company has signed a joint venture with International Foods. Uh, the company was visited by the United Nations team on March 9th, 2023 to organize an alliance to work together with them in South Korea on a deal worth $5.7 million. And there's just a lot more information here, folks. Now, they are doing a lot of business. It is just picking up. The revenues are just starting, but that's not the only revenues they have. There is one other piece of news that came out on the 25th of January that has nothing to do with any of this stuff. Now, this is not the same news I read. This is... <laughs> I had this little blurb. Now they've given me this huge piece of news. Thank God I pretty much remember what it is. All right. It comes down to this. QEDN has an investment into Energy Today, ticker NRGT, on the market. They tell us that they own about 25 million shares of the company, which is just under 50%. They own about 42% of this company. Now, what they brought to my attention are two things. Let's take a look at this. The ticker is N, where he go again? NRGT. First thing they brought to my attention is that NRGT has a very, very small float. Outstanding share count, 58.9 million shares. How many do the insiders own? 58.9 million shares. All they left was 14,000 shares in the float. Folks, that's a legitimate float and they don't have to change it. We aren't on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. We're on the OTC where they have no minimum criteria for a float. So this float is one of the lowest I have ever freaking seen. What was her relative volume the other day? Nothing. I don't know why. What's their financials? Just out of uh, nothing there, 
nothing there. The reason I'm looking at her financials is because over in their news, the one I read, they said that they are a working gold mine and that they have something like 46,000 ounces of gold that they have indicated, but they believe there could be over 200,000 ounces of gold there. And this revenue, this money, these assets are going to show up on QEDN's assets, on their financials, because they own 42% of it. And we've got one of those coming out any time now. So QEDN, there is a ton of deals that they are working with. They have the backing of the government. They are changing these coca leaf cocaine plantations into the Sacha Inchi. They're just doing more and more with it. And this looks to be like not only a first mover product, but a super rich food product that nobody else can duplicate right now. Not only is it a first mover advantage, it is a monopoly. So let's go take a look at the chart for QEDN. So I've got this up for a six month, four hour view. And we're over here at Thinkorswim, my free trading platform, also known as TOS. Now over here, I've got the same chart as I have here, but this isn't going to change. It stays on the four hours. So I always have an idea of what it is I'm looking at. So as you can see, she has been an uptrend here. We were down here at uh, roughly triple zero four six months ago. She had a push off of the 200, getting up there to triple zero eight. That's a hundred percent coming all the way down to triple zero three, fighting to get over the 200. We had one breakthrough, fell down, and then we ripped here from triple uh, zero three up to triple zero nine. That's a 300% run. She's fallen back to her nine day SMA and she is climbing on her nine day SMA, getting out of the triple zero zone. She is tagging on that double zero one right now. All of our SMAs have crossed the 200. It is looking good. Biom isn't real strong right now. Definitely not, but she is in an uptrend. Our oscillators, our PPO is looking strong, but it's starting to cool off right now. She's just now starting to bend down. We've had a negative crossover on our MACD and our red bars are starting to come into the picture. And our RSI is flat as a pancake at 58. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So there's our jump from our low of 0003. Hit a high there of uh, 0009. Wow, wow, wow. Fell back down to triple zero six. Has been going sideways until she hit the, can't tell if it's the 50 or the 200 haul. I'm going to guess it's the 200 haul. Bounced off of that, then bounced off of it again, pushing herself to that double zero one. And she is riding that 50 day SMA, folks. She's looking really nice. Our 200 day SMA is on an uptrend as well. Our oscillators are looking better on the hourly than they looked on the four. Our PPO is starting to push up right now. It's gradual, but it's climbing. Same with our MACD. It is pushing up. We're going to have a crossover on this line right now. And our RSI is starting to climb. She has moved from ooh, 49 up to 53. Take a look at our five-day, five-minute. Well, she's on an uptrend. It's just very gradual, very slight. We got a low bubble here of triple zero seven. There is our double zero one. She's come down and she is over top of her 200. I like that. She is hanging on to it, bouncing from triple zero eight up to that double zero one, landing right smack in the middle right now at triple zero nine. Oscillators say she's trying to climb. We got a crossover on our PPO. Um, we got a crossover happening on our MACD and our RSI is climbing. So it does show some heat in the charts right now. There is a trend she's breaking out of. And once they get to the double zeros, they have a tendency to move even faster. So we have that to look forward to. What we need to see is some volume come in. Now, it wouldn't hurt to do a little more uh, 
<laughs> due diligence on that other company they're invested into, Next Energy, NRGT, or whatever it is. I mean, for goodness sake, 14,000 in the float. That's unheard of. But I didn't see any volume on Friday, so I don't know if they're on the market or not. All right, let's jump into that next one here. Better late than never, Jerome. I got you covered, Mr. Horace. This is PTPI, Petros Pharmaceuticals. This is an American company based out of New York. Friday, she finished the day at $1.50 and she dropped 2.6%. Now, this is a penny stock on the major exchange, which is going to give you benefits. First off, there's no transaction fees. You can buy the stock for free. You can sell the stock for free. Plus, you can trade a pre-market, aftermarket. You can't do that with OTC ever. And let's face it, folks, there's just a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchanges. Not to mention a lot more oversight, which means there's a lot less BS with these companies. So what is PTPI about? Well, they tell us here that Petros is actively researching new formulations across several serious men's health conditions and will continue to build up its broader portfolio and pipeline, which is what we're going to see in the news. Now, what I also noticed when I was going through this news is that their primary purpose with these drugs is to get them switched from being strictly prescription drugs to being available over the counter which would make the marketability of any of these drugs tenfold easily. So we've got two pieces of news here that tell us about the progress of their primary drug, Stendra. We got one in December and one in January. The one in December, the company successfully completes important study in effort to make Stendra the first erectile dysfunction medication to be moved from prescription to over-the-counter. Then in January, the company announces two upcoming FDA meetings to review progress and path forward for Stendra to move from pharmaceutical to over-the-counter. And then we've got a piece of news here that came out on the 14th of this month. Petros Pharmaceuticals enters into an AI licensing agreement with leading multi-billion dollar software provider. Now, this is kind of interesting. They tell us here that as previously announced, this AI-driven technology is meant to provide an automated screening mechanism that should enhance the self-selection process and help mitigate that only men who are appropriate to use Stendra should be able to gain access to the medication. We believe that it will be a streamlined turnkey application, and we look forward to providing additional details both about the utilization and the partnership itself in the coming weeks and months. So basically, you're getting an AI here to do the preliminary due diligence on somebody and approve them prior to them being able to buy it over the counter, which is a whole new facet in medication pre prescriptions. All right, so what was the uh, relative volume around the company today? Oh, man, dropped over 50%, going from an average over the last 30 days of 1.3 million down to under a half a million today. Share structure for PTPI. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we got ourselves a low float. Don't have a clue what it is, but I see the outstanding share count is only 2.2 million which means our float isn't going to be any higher than that. And a low float is constituted under 10 million. We're down near 2 million. We've got an excellent float here, folks. Market cap for the company is currently 3.3 million. Taking a look at the financials for PTPI. We're making money, just not much. We've been dropping over the last four years, going from 15 and a half million. Don't forget those three zeros we got to add behind any of these numbers. Down to nine and a half, seven and a half, six. We're down to six million at the end of 2022. And we got to take home more than 50% of that in profit. That's the good news. Taking a look at our quarterlies. All right, a year ago, we were losing money. Came up to about 800,000, kicked it to two and a half million, and we've been hovering between 1.5 and 2 million the last two quarters, and we're due one right now. 
Good news still, they're bringing home nice steady profit and it looks like the profits are increasing. They're getting stronger profit margins here, whatever it is they're doing. Balance sheet for Petros. Lots of money in the bank, eh? They got about 18 million in the bank. Total assets for Petros is almost 39 million. Total liabilities is less, about 32 million. So we are holding positive stockholder equity in this company. We're not holding a bag. There is value on the shares. We have positive stockholder equity of $7 million roughly. Taking a look at the disclosures. We've got a couple of 13 G's here. I do believe one was 9% and 6%. These are always good news, folks. These SC 13 G's are when a new owner comes on board. Someone who buys enough shares, they get a percentage of the company. They normally get a voice. They get voting rights. This was Art and Capital right there. They got themselves about 244,000 shares. That gave them 10% of the company. The other one, which one was that? This one, I think. Yeah, Mitchell P. Copen. They got themselves 154,000 shares, and they now own... 6.6% of the company. Now, I don't know either one of those people. Sometimes who invests is the catalyst. These look like just everyday normal investors. So but let's take a look at the chart and bought for into PT, the company. PI, They're just not investing in stock that they can sell later. They have bought a share of the company. Two new investors. And we've already looked at the news. So let's go take a look at the chart for ticker PTPI. This is Petros Pharmaceutica. We are looking at a six month, four hour view here. We have got a high of $4.74, but that really doesn't compare to the real high. Let's go back three years just so you can get an idea of what's going on here. Back in November of 2021, the company hit a high of $52. A year later, she had fallen down to this support of $4 and she was down there for a few months. Then she dribbled down to even a lower low of 92 cents. She did this in April of 2023. Let's take a closer look at that. She hit this low of 92 cents and in one day, she went from 92 cents up to $8.50. You're looking at 850% run. She came back down, landing on the nine day. And over the next five days, she just kept climbing, pushing to a new high of $9.54. So over six days, she had over a thousand percent run. She came back down, landing on this strong support of $4, but she was also on top of her 200 day SMA. When she broke one, she broke them both. And that was too much breakage. She came down hard and furious through all of her SMAs, coming down to a new support of $1.75 here. She had a big bounce off of that, fought that resistance here at $4, lost that battle, came down to this new support of $1.75 and fell underneath it. And she has basically been going sideways. And right now, as you can see by our oscillators, she is starting to push up. Now, let's come on down to our six-month, four-hour view. There's that drop to that new support of $1.75. And again, in one day, she bounces from $1.75 up to $4.74. You're looking at about 250, just shy of 300% run. Came back down to the nine-day, broke through the 200 again, got up to that strong support of $4.00 really worked trying to get up over on top of that and it just couldn't do it. Fell back down to this new support of a buck 75 and then fell underneath it. Now, what I want you to pay attention to here is where the price is sitting. Look at it sitting on this purple blue line, right? Bang, 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 all over it. That purple blue line is my 200 day haul. The 200 day haul is a lot like your 200 day SMA. Both take 200 days of prices, average them all together, and the haul puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with two different long-term lines on your chart, and penny stocks really pay strong heed to the 200 haul, as you can see. So she rode that 200 haul right up to the 200-day SMA, did a breakout, then she fell down to a crouch, hitting a low here of $1.00. 
bouncing up to $2 up and over this resistance back underneath the 200. We got a lot of bouncing up over and back under this 200. And she's done it again, but this time things are different. Let me back out just a wee bit more. All of our SMAs were in a downtrend up until this point right here when she decided to make a move and get on top of that 50 and the 200 with this one big bar. Lots of excitement. She came back down to the nine day and she just walked over that 200 day SMA and she's got some huge bounces going through this resistance and just keeps coming back down to the nine day securely. And right now she's about ready to bounce off of the 20. Well, when she did this breakout over the 200, all of our SMAs changed. They were all falling down. Now every single one of them is pushing up, getting ready to cross that 200 and our price is bouncing off of the 20. That is looking solid. Now we've had more volume these last five days than normal, but it is getting less and less right now. Our oscillators, we're getting mixed signals on the four hour chart. Our PPO looks like it's in recovery. Looks like it's just starting to come back up. Meanwhile, our MACD looks like it's still pushing down, but our RSI is climbing. Mixed signals. But the chart doesn't look bad. I can say that much. Let's take a look at our one uh, hour, 20 day. All right. Even with this big bounce right here, and she went from a dollar up to $2, she is in a downtrend. She was pretty deep underneath the 200. We had that fly high, came back down, and now she's right up underneath the 200, snuggling up to it. She got across her 50-day SMA about a week ago, stayed on top of that for a day, then we got that big bar breaking out, right? You can't miss that compared to all these other bars. This is definitely catching your eye. Came back down to the nine day and she is climbing on that. And when she falls, she falls to her 20. Floats on her nine, bounces on her 20. And now we've got the 50 day SMA, which has come into the picture. She's been negotiating with it and it looks like they're coming to terms right now. Our 200 day uh, SMA is just now starting to turn up. Our other SMAs are right there. The price is climbing with many green bars behind themselves. Oscillators. We have an imminent crossover on our PPO right now. Imminent crossover on our MACD and our first green bar coming into the picture. <laughs> and our RSI is falling just a wee bit. But I think PTPI is definitely one to keep your eye on. They've got those two meetings with the FDA to try to get this erectile dysfunctional drug off of prescription only onto over-the-counter. So anybody can buy it once they've been screened by this new AI program that they're trying to make a deal to get. So there's lots of things going on with it right now. So I wouldn't overlook the company, especially with such a low float. All right, we got one stock left. Let's go take a look at TANH, Tantech Holdings. Now, I'm not going to be able to tell you very much about this company. They don't have a business description. They don't have any news over here, so I can't get any description from the news to give you. This is all stuff from Seeking Alpha, and I don't even know if they're covering this company at all. And when it comes to disclosures, we've got a couple 6Ks here. But these 6Ks are about them talking to other companies, trying to negotiate some deals for a loan with stock as collateral and stuff like that. So I really don't have a lot of information outside of the most recent financial, which came out in December, but it's actually covering the period of uh, June 2023. So there's really nothing after June of 2023 that we can consider. So that's all the information I've got. So Tantech, she finished the day on Friday at 97 cents and almost 12% gains. Now, this is another penny stock on the major exchange. You're going to get those same benefits we were talking about earlier. And something you've always got to keep your mind about, and we don't have to worry about it with this one, but whenever you have a major exchange stock under a dollar, check to see how long they've been under a dollar. Go to their filings and see if they've been contacted by the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, warning them that if they don't get that price up over a dollar, 
for 10 consecutive days, they're going to be kicked off of the major exchange down to the OTC. So that's always a concern with a major exchange stock that's under a dollar, though I wouldn't be too worried about this one. So what does this company do? Well, all the information I've got, I've gotten out of the most recent financial, which is June 2023, but they didn't get it out until December. So this is what I've learned about this company. They have got three divisions. They deal with a bamboo charcoal business. They deal with biodegradable packaging, and they've just entered into the EV marketing. This is how they break it down for us. Historically, we have been a specialized manufacturer of bamboo charcoal-based products with primary business focus in consumer products and low emission barbecue charcoal. We are now engaging in research, development, production, and distribution of various charcoal products and vehicles, as well as trading bamboo charcoal products. Now check out what they can do here. The largest category of our consumer products is purification and deodorization products. Made from dry distilled carbonized bamboo, our purification and deodorization products have the ability to absorb harmful substances and airborne odors, including benzene, formaldehyde, ammonia, and carbon tetrachloride. These products also come in many shapes and varieties for a multiple of purposes, including pillows, cushion insoles, wrist pads, clothes hangers, and other products. They also make a bamboo vinegar, cleaning products, including disinfectants, detergents, lotions, specialized soaps, and toilet cleaners. Yes, they do all that. At the end of uh, 2021 and the beginning of 2022, the company merged its trading segment into a consumer production segment and started providing biodegradable packaging. I don't have a lot of information about that. Another division they are into that I don't have a lot of information on, we are in the process of transforming our business to focus more on the specialty electric vehicle market developing and selling specialty EVs such as electric driverless street sweepers. Hmm, that's a new one. And they believe that by creating this sort of marketing product, they could actually get money from the government for that. So we see what they say they're doing. They're working with these bamboo charcoal products for deodorization. They are working with biodegradable packaging and they want to work with these EV driverless street sweepers. But that's all we know. I have no news. I have no contracts. I haven't done a deep dive. So I honestly have no more information than that, except to say the relative volume for the company today. What? was huge. I mean, that's a huge jump and I have not found a catalyst. Now I haven't checked Twitter. Maybe there's something over there because she jumped from three quarter million shares, which has been her average over the last 30 days to over 8 million shares today. What's the deal? Share structure for TA and H. Oh man, this is just getting better and better. Outstanding share count is a mere 1.2 million shares. I don't know what the float is, but it's not going to be higher than that. It can't be higher than the outstanding share count and it could be less. However, in saying that they are on the NASDAQ, they've got a minimum criteria for what your float can be. You cannot go under 1 million shares. So hopefully they're not less than 1 million. This is a beautiful setup for a small float. Market cap for the company, we are at 1.1 million. Financials for Tantech, they making any money? By golly, by gosh, they are. Over the last four years, they've been doing eh, close to 50 million. At the end of 2022, they did about 53 and a half million and they got to keep 10 million of that for profit. Quarterly reports, yeah, some NASDAQ companies have them, some don't, but they all have balance sheets. Cash and cash equivalent for the company. What do they got in the bank? 
about 19 million. Total assets for the company, 134 million. Total liabilities, who yeah, look at that, 16 million, which means we've got positive stockholder equity of 118 million. We're not holding no bag here. Looking at the disclosures for the company. We do have a couple of 6Ks down here. I, I didn't go into them too deeply. They're talking to other investors about making a deal for a loan or a promissory note using stock to back it up, something like that. And as I already showed you, they don't have any news. You've seen all the information that I am aware of. The only other thing we can look at is that chart. So let's go take a look at ticker T-A-N-H. No, I don't want to call that. Oh, my God. T-A-N-H. All right, that's a one hour. Let's back it out to four hours. So that's a four-hour, six-month chart for TAN Tech Holdings, ticker T-A-N-H. So we've got a high here of $4.15. We hit in the middle of October of last year. She jumped from, let's call it a dollar, to just over four bucks. That's a 400% run. She came back down, took another bounce, went to 318. That's a 300% bounce. Came down to a dollar 37 and bounced up to 393. That's a 300% <laughs> bounce. There was a lot of money to be made on this stock during this period. She did finally break out over the 200, came down, landed on her 50, rode on that for a while, then fell down to the 200, really tried to stay above the 200, had another breakout, but banged her head on the 50. That was enough to push her down under the 200, scratching and scraping, trying to stay up there, couldn't do it. She fell under the 200. She did this back at the beginning of December. And since then, she has been falling down to a low here of 55 cents, which she hit at the beginning of February. And off of that low bubble, we have a change of trend. There's no doubt about that. Look at our 200 haul, purple when it's falling, blue when it's rising. Here's our 50-day SMA. It too is turning. There's our 20 getting ready to cross the 200. They're all getting ready to cross the 200. Our volume has been picking up over the last week. It's getting stronger and stronger. Now, we have had a pullback. She did a big rip here from about 75 cents up to $1.80. You're looking at 125% run. She came back down, bounced on the 200 a few times, and she fell underneath down here to the 20. Bounced off that 20 and came right back up to the 200. And believe it or not, she's up here, folks. She is above the 200, above her nine day. Everything is looking gorgeous on this chart. Oscillators, they were really strong, but there is some serious pullback right now, as you can imagine. But as I said, the price says, well, we're going to have to check. The price says 97 cents. This is after market. May not see it clear enough on this long chart. So let's come on down to the 20 day, one hour view. So there's our low bubble. She was underneath the 200 haul, rolled that 200 haul right up to the 200-day SMA, jumped, got up on top of the 200, started bouncing on that until she got on her 50, was bouncing on that until she got on her nine-day escalator and rolled that straight up to heaven. Came back down, came underneath her nine-day. Is she on the 50? Please be on the 50 right now. Looks like she's sitting on the 50-day SMA. She has gone underneath 97. She is at 87 right now. That was a big rip. That was a big fall. She has come down higher than where she started, but not by much. Our 200-day SMA is still pushing up. All of our other SMAs look a little iffy right now. We got to keep our eye on those. Woo, look at our oscillators. They all fell really hard. The good news is every single one of them looks like they're just on the edge, just on the cusp of starting to turn around as our RSI is doing right now, starting to push up. Take a look at our five-day, five-minute. So there's our low of 63 cents five days ago. She was under the 200, 
got up on top of it, stayed real close to two days ago, Thursday, started to push away on her 50, got up on her 20, and then launched, came back down, hit our 200, really tried to hang on to the 200 here, but look at all of these other SMAs coming right down on her head. You couldn't blame her for falling down. She's come down deep here, and right now she is struggling to turn around, folks, but Ooh, that's a great setup. You see the mirror image here? Kind of looks like a bottle or something. Well, you see where the bottle opens up here? I got my PPO going up and my ADX going down. That tells me we are in a setup for a climb. Guaranteed to be going up if my ADX is going down and my PPO is going up. My MACD, we've got a crossover right now. And she is pushing up towards that signal line. And we got a green bar in the picture. And look at our RSI takeoff. That's going from 37 up to 54. This is looking like she is setting up for a turnaround right now. I would do some more due diligence. I'd go over to Twitter. I'd go over to Google. I'd look to see if there's anything else we missed because she's getting a lot of volume. The volume kicked up almost 10 times today, right? And I can't find any catalyst. And she looks like she's turning around right now. There could be good reason for this to run. I like that long chart. That four-hour chart, you can see she is breaking out right now. She is looking really strong, folks. So T-A-N-H, it's another one that wouldn't be bad to be putting on your watch list. So this ran a little longer than I wanted to go. I've been trying to keep these videos under 15 minutes, but you know, this is kind of like part two to my live streaming event on Thursday, which is not 45 minutes. That was twice as long. That was an hour and 36 minutes long. I think we set an all time record on Thursday. I don't know how long this one is, but it's kind of long too. But there you go, folks. You've got three more stocks brought to us by the investors and all of them had decent floats, especially that NRGT or whatever it was that had 14,000, the gold mine company. I'm going to do some more due diligence on that one. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.